Hi, I'm Joseph Junta, the music director and conductor of the Des Moines Symphony and Academy. I'm thrilled to invite you all to our final concerts of the season, West Side Story, on May 18th and 19th at the Civic Center of Greater Des Moines. I couldn't be happier with uh, the season that we are about ready to, to close out, and in particular because Leonard Bernstein was such a major influence on my musical life. He created an enthusiasm and a spirit and a work ethic in me and many hundreds of other people uh, that he came in contact throughout his life, and I'm just grateful that, uh, that we were able to uh, play at least one of his pieces on each of our programs this year, and uh, what could be better than concluding our season with one of the great masterpieces of all time, West Side Story. As we conclude our season-long Bernstein Centennial Salute, the piece we open this program with is the very first piece that I studied with Leonard Bernstein. It's Rossini's wonderful overture to the Italian girl in Algiers. I was about uh, 16 years old when um, a friend of ours took me up to Tanglewood and I met Bernstein there. And then uh, he, I don't quite remember the answer to this question, but what he did say to me was, why do you want to be a conductor? Whatever I said must have worked because he gave me his score in his briefcase to uh, this piece, The Italian in Algiers, and he said, here, take a look at it, and in the morning I'm going to be rehearsing the Boston Symphony. Come to rehearsal, and then we'll speak about it. So, obviously, I made some sort of impression on him, and oh my goodness, did he make a wonderful impression on me. Now, Rossini was the originator of the bel canto style of singing. This is a really florid, beautiful, melodic style of singing that had never been done before. And his music is just full of fast rhythms and animation and even some humor. As a matter of fact, he was at his best when he wrote comic operas like The Barber of Seville. <clears throat> and this overture is very similar and also comic as The Barber of Seville overture is. This is just absolutely vintage Rossini full of humor and vigor and energy, and it goes straight to the end. It's a wonderful way to start a program. Eric Korngold lived quite an interesting life. He was raised in Vienna. In the 1930s, Korngold, who was Jewish, uh, continued to feel a little uneasy about all the um, growing anti-Semite feelings that were happening at the time, and he eventually immigrated to Hollywood. He started to dabble in creating film music and found out that not only did he enjoy it, but he really created some great film scores. He was so successful at it that he actually garnered two Academy Awards for it. During this time, he continued to write concert music, and the Violin Concerto was one of those pieces. He was encouraged by the great violin virtuoso, maybe the greatest violinist of all time, Yasha Heifetz, uh, to, to write this piece, and Heifetz, of course, was the one that premiered it with the St. Louis Symphony in 1947. It's a beautiful three-movement work, and it does actually sound like movie music with these soaring melodies and stunningly beautiful orchestration, and uh, it's really something that uh, I think you'll really enjoy. To play the piece with us is a wonderful, world-renowned violinist, Philip Quint. Philip is one of the great violinists playing on the circuit today. He's played uh, with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, Chicago Symphony, the London Symphony, and I know that uh, you will really enjoy his interpretation of this work. The West Side Story is certainly considered one of the best musical scores ever written. Bernstein really wanted the orchestration to complement the story. The symphonic dances uh, have been excerpted from some wonderful sections from the show. It includes the, uh, the prologue, which is sort of an unsteady, rhythmic jazz element that depicts, uh, these motives depict the rivalry between the two gangs, the Sharks and the Jets. Uh, there's the Mambo, of course, which is the competition dance between the two gangs. The Cool Fugue, which is that fabulous dance sequence where the Jets actually practice sort of controlling their temper, their anger. And the Rumble, of course, the highlight of the show where the two gangs battle. And finally, the beautiful love music that includes the tune uh, somewhere. So, this is a remarkable piece of music. I always uh, have a great time preparing it and conducting it, and I know you'll enjoy the symphonic dances from West Side Story. Ottorino Respighi was an Italian composer, and he was a violinist and a violist and a musicologist. He had a tremendous amount of talent, but he was most famous for what we call the trilogy of music, uh, pieces that were inspired by the city of Rome. The Fountains of Rome were written in 1917, the Pines of Rome in 1924, and of course the Roman festivals in 1927. His music always sounds Italian to me, and I think you'll agree with that, but it does have these 
Russian influences of orchestration that, that we might hear from a Tchaikovsky or a Rimsky-Korsakov. It also has those thick textures that we hear in Germany from the Germans like Richard Strauss or, or Richard Wagner. Uh, there's a lot of thickness of texture in his music, but it's beautiful music. And most of his music he wrote was programmatic music. In other words, it was music that told a story. And certainly that is the case with the Pines of Rome which is what we're gonna play for you to end our season. Uh, this music is about those fabulous century-old pine trees that seem to be found on every corner in the city of Rome. The most famous movement of all, the pines of the Appian Web, starts at dawn, a very misty dawn, and portrays that wonderful route to the outskirts of Rome. It's a sort of relentless marching of the soldiers that you can hear that get closer and closer and closer to the city. And uh, this ends with the most glorious and magnificent climaxes in all of the orchestral repertoire. And it includes additional brass players that are actually placed in the audience. It's a wonderful piece of music. It's a great conclusion to our season. And I look forward to seeing all of you at the Civic Center on May 18th at 7.30 and May 19th at 2.30 in the afternoon. Thank you so much for supporting us this year. We look forward to not only seeing you at these concerts, but also, of course, all of our summer offerings and next season's programs.